Tonight, America's struggling middle class has said every way possible that the big banks bailed out by taxpayer dollars are not doing enough to help. In our new poll, 69% of you say the banks owe more. And now we have a whistleblower who has come forward saying he can't bear what's happening to customers at his big bank who thought they were playing by the rules. Here's David Muir. They should be held accountable. Thousands of you have reached out to us. I haven't been able to recover. Beside yourself with the banks after that promise that following the taxpayer bailout, there would be help for homeowners simply trying to hold on to their homes. Six and a half million Americans are now late on their mortgages, a new record. And yet to date, how many of you have been helped? Just 168,000 have had their mortgages permanently modified in that federal program announced after the bailout. And until I mean, now, we have not heard from someone inside the bank. You've worked at the bank for 20 years. Yes, that's correct. This vice president at one of the biggest banks asked that we not show his face. We've changed his voice. He is aware of the thousands who've emailed us, like Jay and Leanne Given. Both lost their jobs, begging their bank for six months to modify their mortgage. And yet nothing. You know, we're raised to do the right thing and... You know, we're treated like a number. But what about all this talk from Washington that after the bailout, the major banks would help homeowners? It's just not happening. His bank alone holds tens of millions in deposits. In the last year, how many loan modifications have you seen in your particular bank? Completed. Fully completed, zero. And he says it's no accident that runaround you're getting at the bank, revealing what he says he's been told by his higher ups, that when customers ask him for mortgage help, what should he say? To have them to call the 1-800 the number. And what happens when these customers call the 1-800 number? They get a complete runaround. And then those loyal customers come back to him. They've been pleading, um, come to me crying in tears. And mortgages, he says, are just the tip of the iceberg, angered by what he considers exploding penalties and fees. The top four banks pulling in more than $40 billion in fees in just a year. He says he won't forget what happened to one customer. I've seen a dollar and 40 cents escalate to over $1,000 in overdraft fees. How is this possible? It snowballs. And to get those fees, he says bank employees are pushed to sign up customers for as many accounts, as many cards as possible. The more cards you hold, the more fees they collect. And he says some employees so pressured to sign you up for more have actually taken your information home with them. Your social security number home, your check ATM card number home, your PIN number home, it's on you for online banking. Have you seen it in your own bank? On multiple occasions. Well, I have seen customers over a four-month four month period have 10 to 20 checking accounts. Open and close. He says he's tried to stop the cycle. If your bosses knew that you were telling some of these customers you really don't need that account or you don't need this financial product. As a vice president of the bank, I would be terminated. But he says he can't get those customers, like that couple from Georgia, out of his mind. I don't see how the middle class is going to survive. I'm in the middle of this um, disaster and no one's listening at the top and no one's listening to the customer. Just one banker's version of the culture inside the bank. In fact, he told us about these managers' meetings, sometimes eight, nine hours long. And we asked him, how long do they spend talking about the struggling middle class, refinancing those mortgages? He said five minutes. And Diane, he said, that's generous in his words. Five minutes.